Yes, we'll do. Cool. All right. All right. Three. 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 Are we recording? Yeah, let's turn the light off. Let's see how the video is with the uh, lights off. Yeah, oh. do you want much um, better? Video's good. Okay. Okay. Do you, is it automatic or do you want? Hour, it's, it's not automatic. Right, so so I'll just let you know. Okay. since we're all here we've been trying to put this training together for a few months so I thought eh, I should probably wing it and then I was like mm, I should probably actually put some effort into it so I actually have a little presentation for you all um, so do we want to just go around and quickly introduce ourselves who's at the table you're gonna to want to say your name because all humans are very shaded so um, just say your name and your role yeah, so I'm Karen Beakers. I'm the OT and assistant technology professional. My name is Marie Davis, and I'm the fairy godmother. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Tom Schicker. I'm Sylvie's dad. Kirsten Isgro, Sylvie's mom. Ann Gatch, special educator, case manager. I'm Abby Kelly, and I'm shadowing a cat. And I'm Alicia Curry, speech and language pathologist. And I'm Kat, and I'm Sylvie's para. So, why are we here? We're here to learn a bit more about the Toby, um, but also more about how to support Sylvie's communication. Because um, even if you know exactly how to work the Toby, you still need some support with how to support Sylvie. So some of my goals personally is to share some of the information that I've learned from working with Sylvie for the last year and a half with the Toby. Um, and I'm hoping you guys are ready to learn. So next slide. Here's some stuff I'm going to cover. Uh, the majority of the content will actually be in the communication support uh, because the rest of the stuff I do have in that reference manual, but I am going to cover that since we all have kind of different uh, backgrounds uh, with where we're at with the Toby. So I will cover the device basics, the communication software, and the creative software, um, but then we'll focus more on the communication support. So we'll start with the device basics. Here is the device. Um, and usually it is on the mount, so you can go ahead and go to the mounting. Um, so Sylvie has two of these mounts and one of the table mounts. These are called the rolling mounts. And one of these is at school, one of these is at home, and that one's at home. So for the most part, using the rolling mounts is more convenient because there's a more wider variety of where you can place it. If she's lying on the couch, if she's sitting in her wheelchair, most of the time the rolling mount will work. The table mount is great if you're going somewhere and the rolling mount is very inconvenient to bring along. So the big thing about mounting is the center part, that's the actual mounting plate. So for the sake of time, I won't have you all try right now, but afterwards if you haven't mounted it, I would like you to try mounting it. Um, so I will demonstrate real quickly for you guys. So I'm gonna lift this up right here. So this is the mounting plate that is on all of the mounts and the back of the Toby fits perfectly into here. So I'm actually gonna turn this ways so you can see. So there's a pin on the back of this plate and so you have to pull back on the pin and support the Toby up here. Usually it will be lower down, but yeah. So you support it and then you have to make sure it's flat pull the pin, slide it on, and then if it doesn't click, it's a loud click, no matter. If it doesn't, here we go. If it doesn't click, it isn't in. So here, it's just so high up. So you gotta twist it around. There we go, that's the click. If it doesn't click, it's not actually on, so you really need to make sure it clicks. If it doesn't, do what we just did, which is trying until it 
Thanks. The mounting system could have been designed better, but this is what it is. So um, that's that. So the next thing that I'll talk about are the control buttons. So half of the buttons are just like you'd find on your laptop, and half of the buttons are buttons you would not find on a regular laptop. So go ahead. These ones make sense. Um, so the power button, as always, you just press it to turn it on. Um, volume up and volume down are the external buttons. So right up here. And all this information is in the manual. So if you were like, what's this button do? Just go check. Um, and then the power connector, that's just to connect the cord in. So then the other buttons are the ones on the left side, right here. And these are all related to the eye tracking or the communication software. So the top button, it pauses and unpauses the eye tracking. So um, let's say Sylvia was starting to have a seizure. You would pause the Toby if you remembered, so then it doesn't think that she's looking at it intentionally, and that just stops all of the eye control. Um, and in order to unpause it, you just press the button again. Uh, the second button down, I'll talk a little bit more about when I talk about positioning, but it brings up this window right here, if you can see that, um, and that is the eye gaze tracker, and it helps us know whether Sylvie can actually see the Toby or not, and whether the Toby can see her eyes. And the last button down, the third button down, is the full screen button, and each of these actually has one, two, and three dots on it. So you can use that to reference your, uh, to orient yourself. And the full screen button will take the system, the Toby, out of full screen if it is in full screen, so you can access the desktop. And if it's not in full screen and communicator is open, it'll open it back up to full screen. So Toby thinks it's upside down right I know, now. I thought it was. So it does this sometimes. So. I'm gonna do this, okay. and then I'm gonna flip it back around, <laughs> and it'll hopefully figure itself out. It does this sometimes. So the great thing about the power button is that if the Toby's doing something wrong, you can just restart it, <laughs> and it works just fine, hopefully. So we can go on and talk a little bit about positioning. So I just have some pictures of Sylvie in different positions with the Toby in front of her. Um, so, as I mentioned, if you press that second button down, that window pops up, and those two dots in the middle are her eyes. Um, so if there are two dots, that's perfect. Uh, and there's a little white arrow, you might not be able to see it too well, there's a little white arrow that pops up on this uh, side right here. And ideally, that arrow should be in the green area, or a little bit above the middle, that seems to be the perfect distance for her to be from the Toby. So if you just take a look at all of these, and once you kind of practice positioning Sylvie, then you'll kind of figure out without really having to use this as much, um, just as a quick gauge. So you can kind of see that it's like two and a half feet is kind of the best uh, for her, but it can vary a little and doesn't seem to bother her at all. And so, so when it goes in the red or yellow, what does that mean you're doing with the so Toby? So if it's up top in the red or yellow, it is too close, so you move the Toby away. Mm -hmm. And if it is closer to the bottom, it's too far away, and you need to move it closer. Gotcha. Any other questions? Well, I was going to make another comment. Yeah. I, I don't know that Anne knows that... Uh, Sylvie got a blue Lazy Boy recliner for her birthday, oh. which is perfect to sit in <laughs> oh. while she's looking at her Toby. That's fantastic. So you need to, at some point, we'll get a picture of that, too, this right? Is that right there. She's oh, just that covered in blankets. Just you just can't see it. She's yeah. covered in blankets. But so, is it in her room, the recliner? It's in the, oh, it's in the, it's in the family room. Yeah. Yeah. But it has, like, you know, the handle. If you lift it up, it's got little nice. places for her remote control <laughs> and her, uh, yeah. her root beer. So as you can see, you can kind of tell where Sylvie is looking based on her head position and kind of follow that and then place the Toby. The best way to figure it out is for you to try it and be like, okay, where would I want to be if I wanted to see the Toby and get a sense of that and then transfer that to Sylvie. 
I think she, if you asked her, she would be totally okay with you trying it if that meant you could support her better. Mm -hmm. So. And one quick yeah. thing about that, and this may be obvious, but every time you set her up, check this. Yep. Because it may be, even if it seems like the same position, I always do a quick mm -hmm. check just to make sure. Or after a seizure, for instance, just double check that she can see again. And, um, and the word that, that she uses with her is calibrate. Mm -hmm. So yeah. she knows the word calibrate means mm -hmm. let's get our Although eyes Although it's set. not actually calibrating it's not actually it. <laughs> Right. But yes, that's yeah. the word. <laughs> yes. But that's the word we use with Cindy. I see. Okay. <laughs> okay. So batteries, real quick. Um, we were talking about this before, but... Um, in general, if it's charged overnight, then it'll, they should last all day. Um, just plug it in. Uh, it's best, like your own laptop, which I know most of us don't do, um, but to turn it off at the end of the day when you're not using it, then it saves the battery life and all that. So if you can remember to turn it off, that would be helpful. Um, and then there is a charging station uh, the information is in the reference manual, but it's not working right now, so I'm not really going to go into that because that's, you know, not necessary to know, and you can look for that information in the manual. Any questions? All right. I just have a question for, when did, what year did she get this? This Toby? Do you know that was last year. No, no, no. Because it's been here since I've been in the district, and that's three years. This Toby? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because for some reason I thought it was upgraded. So it must be three. The software was. Yeah, we got okay. the device. But the device so itself. I can't remember. Okay, I can find point. out from Andrea. I just wanted, I feel like I just wanted to. Yeah. yeah she we had, we had well, she might be due for another one if you want to keep that in mind, but that's not fourth the purpose. Grade, right? Yes. Yeah. So we already you had, had it. Then. We had it from third grade. So who was it that was telling me that we were getting a new device next year? That's well, I think she'll be eligible. Yeah. Okay. And so we need to talk about that. Okay. But that's going to be another conversation. Gotcha. Yeah, she she'll be eligible. I think it's every three years. So okay, we can look at that. So I covered the basics of the device. Um, if you have more questions, you can obviously ask them or look at the manual. Um, so I'm going to talk about the communication software a little bit. And it's called Communicator 4, the software that she has, and that's the icon. Now, it starts up right away when she, when we turn the Toby on. So if you can see the Toby over here, that is what happens when it starts up. So if you go to the next slide, actually, that's what you see when, if you press the power button and don't touch it, it does take a while to load. So just be patient. It kind of works out because if you turn it on and you're just positioning Sylvie and you're kind of getting her ready, then by the time it's in front of her and she's settled and ready, then the screen usually is up. So the first thing that I do to support her if we're gonna be communicating is I press on this icon <coughs> right here. It's for Sonaflex, which I'll talk about in just a moment. The rest of these are different page sets that she uses for like, taking pictures and practicing typing and stuff like that, but I'll talk about that as well. So when you're on this page, you can support her by pressing that button and saying, Sylvie, I'm clicking on Sonaflex to help you get to your words. So this is then what pops up when you click on Sonaflex. Sonaflex is where she does like 95% of her work and it has a variety of words, some that we've added, some that were already there, and it's set up in a relatively simple way, and she knows how it works. She doesn't necessarily know all of the words that she has yet, so it's just gonna take time and practice. Um, but in general, this message window is where any icon that she selects, any word that she selects, it will pop up there and say the word out loud, but I'll talk about which icons will actually do that in just a minute. Um, the clear all button, self-explanatory, it clears the whole window. Uh, delete last just gets rid of the last word. Um, so with the clear all button, uh, she's still learning how to clear her window once she said her whole sentence out loud and gotten her point across. So I just support her by saying, oh, remember, you said your sentence out loud and we got your point across, let's clear it now. Um, but so, she will go to, yeah. to delete last. Yeah, if she said something. Yeah. Um, so 
we go to the next slide, I'll talk a little bit about what the different icons are, just so you have a sense. You know, for the most part, Sylvie understands this herself, but if you're supporting her by modeling or finding words, this will make it easier for you to understand. So in general, they are color-coded and organized by kind of by part of speech and kind of by category. Um, but these top ones, the ones with the white background, those are words where if it's selected, it will say the word out loud and it will go to the message window. Does that make sense? If she selects or you select a button that has a color background, it looks like this, you know, things is orange and pronouns is yellow, describing is blue, that opens up to more words. And most of the time, there are words that look like this. So if you wanted to say funny, you would go to describe, it would open up to a page that has a bunch of describing words and you would pick funny. And then this last one, these are called context pages. And I'm definitely gonna talk about those because they're very helpful, but you need to understand how they work in order to support her with them, so. So when she goes, duh, duh, over and over again yeah. when somebody's talking, yes. is that from the chatting? That is from the, a context page. So the big difference between this, the main vocabulary, which mm -hmm. you just saw, and a context page is that in a main vocabulary, when you select a word, it goes back to the main page. Mm. So you could say, like, I don't know, I want to go, oh gosh, I'm trying to come up with a sentence that has two. Okay, funny kid, right? So you say describe funny. Once you say funny, it goes back to the main page. Then you go to people, children, mm -hmm. and it goes back to the main page. If you're in a context page, it does not go back. So this is the feelings context page, for example. And these can be great if you wanna talk about a specific topic, like going to her reading context page if we're reading a book or we wanna ask her what she wants to read. Um, the feelings page, if she's kind of agitated and you're wondering, like, can you tell me what, how you're feeling? Can you put some words to it? Being on this page means that she doesn't have to keep navigating to get to these words. They're just there. Um, so, yeah, they're designed for specific contexts. And I'll talk about how to set them up next. So, if you have any questions, you good? Okay. So how we set up the context pages, once you figure it out, it makes sense. So if you remember on the main page on the right hand side, there were like four green context buttons, those can change, those are changeable. And the way you change them is in the top right corner, there's a button on the main page, there's a button that says more contexts and you click on that and this comes up, this page. And this page has all of the available context she has. And if you wanted to change this one, say, for um, change it to music, you would click on this right here. So then that one would be the one you'd be changing. And you would select music. Once you do that, music so it shows up right there. All you have to do is go to home, way up in that top corner, <laughs> um, and then it'll take you back to the main page. Now the only difference is that on that right side, instead of it saying chat, it'll say music. And then she can go into that and end up in her music context page. Any questions about that? And so that works with her changing of classes. You would you would do that if she were heading to music class? Um, yeah, I would do that if she were heading to music class or was about to have music therapy. Um, if we're reading a book or we're at the library, I would change it to reading. And in the reference manual, as of November, I have a list of all of the context pages she has and on a scale of one to five, how much you know exposure she's actually had to those pages. Mm -hmm. So like the feelings page, she's, she, you know, it's four and a half, right? She basically knows all of it. We have been adding some feelings to it, but in general, she knows it very well. The snow page, not so much. So if you were to help her to get to that, you would do a lot more modeling 
and a lot less, you know, expecting that she knows exactly what she's saying based on, you know, she may just be exploring mm -hmm. because she doesn't necessarily know. Yes. And, and none of these buttons on, at this point are active, right? Yes. You've got to get them over to the mm -hmm. home page and then yeah, direct her that's to right. the context. Page. Yeah, so if you were to put something on the right side, if you kept clicking on it, it would, yeah. wouldn't do anything um, because that's actually the way that you can select which one you want to change. Um, so you can click on it as much as you want. It's just not going anywhere. Um, and the volume control, so She's good at this one. She's great at it. <laughs> um, the one on the far right is super fun for Sylvie, pretty much useless, but it's 100%. It puts the Toby at literally 100%, and it's very, very loud. Um, she finds this hilarious sometimes if she's in class. So we've let her keep that. Um, the other two are ones that you can support her with a little better. The one in the middle is great for louder environments, um, such as a kind of a busy classroom, <laughs> Uh, stuff like that. Um, and the one on the left is really good for quieter environments. You know, if we're having a conversation, like if she were here right now, that'd be pretty good. Although, if we're in a classroom setting and, you know, the teacher is instructing, I like to support her by taking her volume almost all the way down using the volume buttons on the side. I'll take it all the way down and then just put it up one and that's just quiet enough that she's not disrupting anyone but she can still hear what she wants to say um, since I don't think that it it makes any sense to take her voice away when the teacher is talking since no other kid has their voice taken away when the teacher's talking mm -hmm. um, I do remind her to try to focus on what you know your mom said whisper but yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> so <In that show. laughs> uh, and occasionally she will go and turn it to 100%. If she does that, I do, if I can catch it, I do remind her, now's not the time, or you might startle yourself, so I help her change it. But if I don't catch it, well, kids like to scream. Um, so, any questions before we move on? So the creative, or the other communication, that's it. Um, so these I mentioned earlier, um, these, you don't necessarily have to help Sylvie navigate to them. She will navigate if she wants to. The other day she navigated to the phonetic keyboard and was just messing around. Um, so it's just like what the sounds sound like when you see the letters. Um, this is her email. So when she goes to it, you can support her with it. All the information's in the manual of really how it works, um, but she's pretty good with it. Um, the last thing on here, I actually do need to add this to the manual. So before I send it out to all of you, I will add it. Um, we recently set up a journaling thing for her, and basically it looks exactly like her system, except that instead of the clear all button, which is what she would usually do to like get rid of what's on her screen, I just have a hide button on every page. So if she clicks hide, it you know just puts a black screen that says like, I'm journaling right now, we can talk later, like I'd like some privacy, and then just go back. So she started doing this last Thursday, Friday, um, and really took to it actually. So the way to get to it is verbs. So you go to verbs, and you go to read, and then there there's a button that says go to journal. In Sonoflex. And then in Sonoflex, yeah. So it's from her main page, so it doesn't take that much <laughs> effort to get to. And then as soon as she's all done, there's actually, she can, once she says she's all done, it sends it to her in an email that just has the subject line journal. And I promised her that no one's gonna read it unless she asks us to, mm -hmm. we put it in a separate folder in her email and she can view them later in the journal. So I'll put that information in the manual as well. Um, but we actually just put headphones in her, uh, turned her so we couldn't see her screen and said, go at it, we'll check in 20 minutes. And it seemed to work for her. So well, I wonder what she's journaling. I know, and I promised her I wouldn't look. Yeah, so mm -hmm. may never know. Well, one way to get around that is after she's been doing it a while. So, is there anything in your journal you can share with me? <laughs> yeah, we're big buddies, you know. We're good. <laughs> what do you want to talk about? Yeah. yeah. So, any questions about the other communication pages? Well, I we've tried, and I think Kat has done a really good job 
of getting to most things in three hits, or three hits gets you to the page, mm -hmm. and then there may be a fourth hit to select. Mm -hmm. So, and we really worked hard on that. Kat yeah. has really worked hard Just on that. Just to make it easier for her, like the verbs we recently redid so that they're categorized in a way that makes sense and every verb of like her 120 verbs that she has is within you know two hits to get there and then a third hit so three hits so she go verbs read write all 120 are within that so creative software not going to cover much of this uh, other than to explain how to kind of navigate to it because i have step-by-step -step information in the manual um, these are just some things she likes to do if she asks, like, if she says, like, coloring book, I go, do you want to go paint right now? Yes or no? Often she'll say yes. Um, and so we use this program called Tux Paint, and um, she really enjoys that. She loves doing music. Um, we use, I play music a lot more frequently, and I actually just linked it to her communication system so she can get to it and out of it. Um, so that's the only one that you wouldn't really have to help her get to necessarily. Um, and it's, I'll update that information as well in the manual. Um, so, so she could potentially break out a drum solo in the middle of class? Yeah. She, yeah. She would have that power. Yeah, she has the power to break out in a solo <laughs> okay. in the middle of class. <laughs> um, you know. Or electric guitar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or the yeah. trumpet. She likes her trumpet, yeah. Yeah, she loves her trumpet. <laughs> so, um, just so you're aware, she could. She could but, do that. You know, yeah. the, the more independence she can have, that's the better. Mm -hmm. um, so. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so, I am going to briefly cover how to support her with this, just because this is something that if you read it, it might not make total sense. Um, so the big thing that you need to know is that dwell time, that phrase, is the same thing as activation speed. So those are again. used interchangeably. Dwell time, dwell time is the same thing as activation speed. And basically this is just how long Sylvie has to look at something in order for it to click. Like she has to hover and then it clicks. For her communication, it's at 800 milliseconds. That has shown to be a really good speed for her. It's just long enough that she can glance, but it's not so long that she really has to stare. Um, but that doesn't work so well for painting and art, for instance, because it's very, very hard to be on that exact spot for almost a second. So we actually bump it down to 200 milliseconds, and she's figured out how to move her eyes in a way where she clicks where exactly where she wants because she just has to stop a little bit longer on that spot. So the way to change this is fairly simple once you figure it out. So there's a thing called gaze interaction settings on the desktop. So remember we talked about getting to the desktop, you get out of full screen. So you press this third button down and you don't have to memorize this, this is written down but I want to talk about it. Um, so you get out of full screen, and then you can access the desktop and click on this icon right here that's called Gaze Interaction Settings, and this opens up. Now, here on the left are different menu items. You need to click on Interaction, the second one down. Here, this red part I've circled, it's not circled on the Toby, wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> is the method and this is the speed. Um, so I actually just took this from the internet so it is not exactly what it looks like because hers is orange and you know. But for regular it would be at 800 milliseconds and it's just a slider. So you would just slide it down to 200 milliseconds. It's often pretty hard to do with touch so actually if you just tap it here, it'll go down. And then the thing you have to remember is to, is to click apply. Otherwise, you've done nothing. Then you can set her up to do whatever she wants. She can do it, and then I usually ask her, like, just look at me when you're done, or sometimes she'll go down on the toolbar where her communication system is and start trying to bring it up. So that, you know, is kind of an indication that she's ready to talk. 
when she does that, the thing we need to remember is to take it back to 800 milliseconds. Otherwise, she's going to be selecting everything in her system because she hasn't had time, you know. So, same thing, backwards. I leave this up. Like, I don't leave it up, but I leave it in the Toby. I don't close it. So then I remember before I put her back in her communication, let me switch it back to 800 milliseconds, press apply. Because all of that has to be done manually. Mm -hmm. There's no way for us to do that, with, for her to do it to herself with eye gaze, is there? There is. Is there no way? Well, there is a way you can work with communicator and have it possible for her to change her dwell time. That may be something I could look into in the future. In the future, mm -hmm. but I think that was the idea. Decision right now <laughs> to be able to stay on that. Oh, you wouldn't have to use this. You can use this communicator software to tell change. it to do change dwell time. Thank you for the idea. <laughs> okay, so this is the other part of this. It's called Windows Control. And so basically it follows her eyes. She controls the mouse. She moves the mouse around with her eyes. So these are things also in the manual, but that are useful to know. This is the um, menu that pops up on the screen. Um, she does pop this up, by the way, by herself, but she also knows how to get rid of it. So I've stopped trying to support her with that because she's capable of moving it and getting rid of it and you know doing whatever. Um, so basically, it's almost always on this uh, left click. That's just the standard. If it were on right click, it would start getting funky with settings and all that. Um, so in order for her to be clicking things in like her art program, for instance, in Tux Paint, it needs to be on this single click button. So this is in the manual, so you can look closer at what each one is. But the single click is the most common. If you want her to be able to see the screen and see the mouse without actually clicking, then you can just put it on this mouse and then she's not actually clicking, she's just taking the mouse around. Um, this last one down here is a click and drag. So imagine if you had a, a mouse and you clicked and then you brought it over and then you let go. Um, that's super useful if she's like in her advent calendar and she has to pick up a an ornament and then put it on the tree. Some programs are designed that way. It's a lot more difficult, so I often will support her. Like once she clicks it, then I help her get it, you know, to the spot. But um, she's just learning, and it's nice to know this so you can support her. So, we good? Mm -hmm. So I covered the basics of the device. Now. I'll talk a bit about supporting her communication, which I think is super important and we really do need to talk about. So I found this little cartoon online and I think it's super funny, so I'm going to read it. This is a good communication partner. A good communication partner listens a lot and doesn't talk too much. A good communication partner models on their AAC user's system. A good communication partner doesn't use a device for testing. Good communication partners presume competence. Be a good communication partner. So we can go to the next slide, unless anyone has questions. <laughs> so actually, I have a video I wanted you guys to watch. Um, aided language stimulation is another word for modeling. So I'll actually just let that explain it. Oh, what are you doing? Uh, you're on the next slide. If you go back. There's just little music, so. We don't have speakers. Oh. <laughs> but there's no words actually in it.
Is your computer just muted right now? I don't have uh, speakers on it. But do you, so, does it have sound though? Uh, no. At all? There's no s speakers at all. Doesn't have an internal uh, speaker. I would have to run upstairs and grab my speakers. You want me to do that? Yeah. Pause that. Okay. Mm -hmm. If I pause this. 